Hello and welcome to Cubby TV. I'm Steve Cubby, your host, and today we're going to talk to Jeremiah Vandermeer, the editor of Pot TV and Cannabis Culture. Jeremiah, how are you today? Steve, I'm good. Good to be here on Cubby TV. Well, we're delighted to be involved once again with Pot TV and with Cannabis Culture. But let's take a minute and talk about the reason that we're all here. Let's talk about the latest information on Mark and the, uh, sh the march that occurred uh, yesterday, I believe, in Mississippi. In Mississauga, actually. Now, this march was a march that was organized by the NDP Riding Association right here, right in Mississauga, Ontario, here in Canada. Now, so Mark is actually serving time in Mississippi in a federal penitentiary in the United States for crimes he committed in Canada. Um, he was taken down there out of Canada against Canadian sovereignty um, for something that the only other person in Canada ever charged for got a $200 fine for. So, yeah, the march happened in Mississauga, Ontario, put together by the NDP Riding Association members there. And uh, it was a, just a sort of impromptu thing. It was very cool. Cannabis Culture and Pod TV, we, need, we weren't even sure that it was happening. We, did, we kind of heard about it through some channels, so we tried to give it as much promotion as possible. But it's really great to see people just all across Canada and in North America who support Mark, who start these independent little activist movements and marches and things. And all of them end up helping out, and the message does get, eventually get across. Um, Jody right now is working on a project with several MPs and other um, politi pol politicians here in Canada that have been supportive of Mark, and they're putting together another letter to the government to ask that they bring Mark back to Canada to serve the rest of his time here, because the U.S. government has already said that he would be allowed to come back as part of a treaty transfer program to serve the rest of his time in Canada and be closer to his wife and everybody else that he loves here. Now, the Canadian government, Stephen Harper, the Conservatives, these cronies, his cronies, haven't said a word. Um, the, there's a new person in charge of that department. He hasn't said anything about it, so we're still waiting. Um, there doesn't seem to be a time limit on it, so it could just be indefinite. They might just let him stay there in the U.S. Well, let's be clear about one thing. Mark was not arrested and extradited because of seeds. I mean, nobody else gets busted for seeds. But Mark did give millions of dollars to American reform movements, legalization movements, medical marijuana movements, uh, defendants in medical marijuana trials. Mark was the go-to man, and for that, the DEA had him arrested. And they even admitted that much in a press release that they issued immediately after Mark's arrest and then quickly retracted when the world began to realize that Mark was a political prisoner. The DEA press release itself says outright, it mentions the fact that Mark was one of the biggest funders of the marijuana legalization movement in North America and that he raised millions of dollars and gave it all the way to activism. And they even said they have the marijuana legalization movement now has one less pot of money to rely on. And they didn't even mention the seeds in the press release. So you can see that it was a political targeting. Mark is a political prisoner in jail because he tried to change the laws. Jeremiah, I'd appreciate it if you'd take a minute and talk about cannabis culture and pot TV as websites. I mean, I was stunned to learn that both of those sites are in the top 25,000 websites in the United States, and that each of those sites gets as much traffic as uh, High Times uh, uh, and, and other major sites. So uh, what's the story? How come you guys are so popular? That's right. Our website is really busy right now. Um, our numbers are, are growing every single day. We do rate really highly. We you know do traffic comparable to all the major pot sites, and often we do more than them. High Times, Normal, and everybody else. Our numbers are really big. We've been around for a long time. Cannabis culture has been online um, since almost the very beginning, and you know it's been 15 plus years. My goodness, even Pot TV itself has since 2000 been online, one of the first video streaming sites, uh, and it was streaming pot videos. 
So at the, at the same time that Pod TV came online, our major public broadcaster came online, CBC, and launched video broadcasting the same time as Pod TV. So Mark Emery and the money he made selling seeds and put into activism really had a huge effect. And he was there early doing it before anybody else. Now, Jeremiah, as the editor of both Cannabis Culture and Pot TV, you're more or less sitting in the captain's chair on the Starship Cannabis. And I'm wondering, what is your view? What is your outlook? What do you see sitting in that chair, sitting in a, a central place of coordinating and relaying all of the uh, information and, and uh, uh, efforts of the drug policy reform movement. What does that look like sitting in your chair to you? Well, I'd say that there's a lot of positive things happening in the cannabis universe right now. Um, we're seeing, of course, because of Washington and Colorado in the United States, massive changes happening. There's a, a momentum and a positive feeling all across North America that things are finally moving in a reforming direction, actually changing these laws. And even on a federal level, we have some politicians coming forward. We have Holder at least giving lip service again to um, saying that he's going to leave Washington and Colorado alone. So that's giving a lot of positive feelings to everybody. Um, there's still, of course, the reality of the United States situation where Obama and his uh, you know, government is cracking down on the states themselves and not necessarily letting them do what they should um, with the medical marijuana scene itself. So we'll see if they try and do the same thing with the recreational marijuana scene. It's a little different now because in Washington state you have the authorities setting up government-run stores to actually sell pot. Um, they're ironing out the details. So, you know, the, all of these things have an effect and the momentum has an effect. Now, in Canada, things are a little different because we have moved backwards. We've regressed in the opposite direction where we have now mandatory minimum sentences for things like as few as growing six plants. You go mandatory sentence six months in prison, six months for six plants. And that's because we have a very hardcore neoconservative government, Stephen Harper, uh, now they've moved in the opposite direction, while at the same time there's positive things happening even right here in the province with Sensible BC, which is a ballot initiative campaign spearheaded by the former editor of Cannabis Culture, Dana Larson, and this campaign could see uh, up to an ounce of marijuana decriminalized in British Columbia, made a lowest police priority and defunded completely on a police level so they couldn't really go after people for it. So it seems like uh, that pendulum swinging back and forth and there's good things and bad things happening, but overall the feeling is one of positivity. So now we get to the big question, Jeremiah. Pretend you're an American tourist in Vancouver. Where do you go to score weed, to get high, to participate in the uh, cannabis culture here in Canada? Oh, well, you have to come to Cannabis Culture Headquarters, of course. Um, I'm a little biased because I happen to work there, but I think that it's probably the funnest place to come in Vancouver if you're a pothead. We have three floors of Empire, Pot Mania, two floors of Vapor Lounges. We have one of the biggest bong stores in Vancouver. We have the Pot TV Studios, the Cannabis Culture Offices. We have the Herb Museum, which is the largest drug war history museum on the planet. Um, it's, it's a pretty amazing space there. And, of course, Vancouver isn't just known for us, the cannabis culture. Um, there's a big pot block where we are on Canby and Hastings, and there's other vapor lounges and head shops all around that area. We have seed companies, several of them on Hastings Street. Um, and, of course, Vancouver is full of beautiful outdoorsy parks. There's endless places to smoke pot in Vancouver. It's really like one of the cloudiest cities around, and it's not just because of all the rain we get. Um, it's a, a lot of fun out here. I mean, come out here and I'll show you around and I'll take you to all the great spots. <laughs> but 307 West Hastings, if you're in Vancouver, the pot block, Cannabis Culture Headquarters, it's the place to be. Now, Jeremiah, you had someone that you wanted to introduce to our audience. Oh, I have Mr. McMahon here, Opus 420. One of my pot TV cohorts. That's right. Myself, me and Mick are going to be hosting the Prairie Harvest Medicinal Cup 
on October 3rd to... No, no, no. Uh, October 4th, 4th, 4th to 6th. 6th. 4th to 6th. That's coming up this Thursday, Friday, or sorry, it's Friday, Friday Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. And uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty amazing. That's in Saskatoon in Saskatchewan, up here in Canada. And it's, uh, it's like a strange judging competition, but a whole heck of a lot more. And it's on the price. It's the third annual. And uh, it's, you know, interesting because this is a fairly conservative uh, section of Canada, very conservative out in the, the prairies there, you know, a smaller community. And uh, the individual, Jeff Lundstrom, who has Skunk Funk uh, Smoke Emporium, you might call it there, has done great work in activism and getting this, uh, this event. And he actually has this date now. Uh, confirmed at the Odeon Event Center in downtown Saskatoon. So it'll be the first weekend of October always from here on in. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, so he's done a lot to get things accepted. And I guess to bring the, the cannabis community from that, you know, that neck of the woods in that area, to bring them a little bit out and realize that they also have a voice that they're not just, you know, need to be silent because of their geographic location, so to say. Right. Now, in Canada, of course, we have Vancouver and Toronto, and they get all the attention for the pot movement, you know, activism that they do. And, of course, the police here in Vancouver are really sort of a lot easier to us. They're easygoing. They don't crack down on us as much. We have, like, you know, six people here in Vancouver last year that were charged with marijuana in the whole damn town. Yeah, the whole city of Vancouver, there was only six arrests for possession of marijuana. Right. That's a little different on the prairies. That's a little different in Saskatoon, where the police are still aggressively pursuing potheads. Um, you know, people, it's, nonviolent people who are doing nothing. So, As we say in Sensible BC, actually, uh, and even in BC, if you're not in downtown Vancouver, if you live anywhere else in British Columbia, Pot arrests actually are double the national average yeah. for the rest of the country. Yeah. So that's one of the things that Sensible BC that we're trying to uh, you know bring to the attention. A lot of people are shocked. They go, "What? This is BC? Isn't it like almost legal there?" And I'm like, "Only if you're in downtown Vancouver. Yeah, maybe, but anywhere else, it's yeah. it you stand twice the chance of actually being arrested and having to appear before a, a judge for simple possession of marijuana as an adult." That's right, and that's why you can come to Vancouver, and there's such great pot tourism here in the city. But you wouldn't want to try that in many, many other places in Canada. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't want to give Americans the wrong idea that pot is anywhere near legalized up here because it really isn't. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not so bad that we have to, you know, cops kicking doors down and things like that. But you do, you know, it's it's prudent to uh, to be careful up here. You don't need the the wet towel by the door so much, but you know, you do want to be sure that you're not offending somebody. It, you know, maybe somebody isn't a little bit put off by what you're doing. Yeah. Otherwise, you might want to go somewhere else because they will phone. And if they make a complaint, cops are obligated. They have to come. Make friends with your neighbors. That's what I always say. That's right. See if they want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they call the cops because you didn't invite them. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's been great hanging out with you guys. And I want to thank you personally for all that you do for freedom and a cannabis legalization. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Uh, thanks a lot for having us, Steve. Good seeing you again, man. Great to have you on Pod TV. When you close your eyes, the image comes in.